Welcome to our weekly forecast. My name is Jay Norris. I teach trading at Trading University. As always, we need to remind you, trading involves risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. First market we'll talk about is the Australian US dollar. There's the Aussie US dollar on a weekly chart. You, you can see you, you broke down through some uh, support levels. Now you're essentially in a, a pretty good support zone. Let me go to a futures chart here so we can see the volume here. I can make a point. You're just above a key support level for us. That actually represents our risk tolerance threshold level for the, the entire rally from 2009 uh, up until 2012. So pretty pretty big level for us. Definitely, You definitely have to get ready to start dollar cost averaging this market, we feel. But not until you start to see smaller candles on the daily chart, uh, lower levels of volume, we think that this market... We think this behavior over the last week uh, definitely uh, favors climactic behavior. We love seeing climactic behavior into significant long-term support. On the other hand, we have to sit back and, and truly wait for a, a change of momentum there, a change of direction on that level just because it's support. We're not going to rush right out and buy it, but that's going to be worth watching. Look for smaller ranges, smaller volume. Uh, I think it's uh, safe to stick your toe back in the water here in the Aussie as far as uh, dollar cost averaging a cash position on, on a longer term time frame. Th this this is all essentially static analysis, looking at a chart and talking about what, what may or may happen. Um, this is probably a good time to segue in to show you our performance of our, our short term signals, our benchmark for the month of January. And the advantage of, of going short term is you can apply both static analysis and dynamic analysis as far as taking advantage of what's happening in the markets right now here's our benchmark performance for the majors effectively we focus on the euro and the dollar index and, and being a runaway bull in, in the dollar index we're basically buying dips in the dollar index being a runaway bear in the euro we're essentially selling rallies there so no surprise it was a great january and we look forward to continuing to keep that benchmark updated and we'll show you how that pans out going forward in the months ahead effectively what we've done with our weekly forecast if we've created a real-time track record going back several years so you can see what we've said about the markets along those lines we're adding in our benchmarks here so you can see the actual buy and sell points and this is a big help to our students too who can go back in time and and make sure that they're seeing those signals they're seeing why exactly those were entry and exit points so there's a lot going on on those shorter term levels that we don't always see on the higher time frames. Next market, the Swiss franc. And what do we say about this two weeks ago that you got to like it down there if we thought there was a ton of room on the upside. On this monthly chart prior to this, this massive sell-off then, uh, basically if we liked it on the long side then, we'd love it on the long side at a cheaper level you, you've pretty much already had a 50 percent retracement of that move down there you can see it purple line represents 50 percent of that blow off sell off so uh, you, you came back in a hurry on that and as we said switzerland is still switzerland it's a landlocked country in europe I'm, i'd almost rather have my money in in uh, some of the south american countries really than than, than switzerland overall however we still favor buying dips in that market although you could certainly see a pause now of that rally at that 50 percent level that's a natural level that a market to uh, take a rest at take a pause at boy it's awful tough calling corrections in markets and that's why we really favor taking advantage of what happens on the lower time frames taking advantage of that dynamic analysis and, and along those lines i'll post a, an old article i'll post an article i had written about that under today's video so you can gives an example and you can see what I'm talking about but here, here's the dollar index here's the dollar index on uh, the daily chart I have to pop out to a monthly chart really to get scope on this guy now and you can see essentially you're in a, a breakaway market you're in a breakaway rally so long term continue to hold on to those those cash positions in UUP or, or even if you're if you if you're fortunate enough to be able to carry a position in the, a smaller position in the futures contract where you're using leverage uh, if it's long term hang on you know hang on look at the volume growth uh, on these as the market goes higher so 
We think there's still a lot of room on the upside. The U.S. was very, very good at taking advantage of, of having a cheaper currency for a long, long time. We think a lot of countries out there kind of put nationalism aside and they're going that same route. One thing you have to remember about America is it's it's pretty insular. It's, it's, a, it's just a huge economy. It's the biggest economy in the world from a GDP perspective, dollar for dollar. And it's also pretty insular. So it would take a long time for a strong dollar to actually start to hurt that. And if you look at historically, going back 20 years, going back 15 years, actually, the dollar's not all that strong, is it, compared to uh, if you look at its average price going back 10 years, 15 years, uh, 20 years. So it'd be a long time before the dollar, for dollar strength will hurt the U.S. economy. Next market to Euro. We think there's a lot of downside here. Um, if you look at our, our short-term signals too here, the, the biggest winners came from short Euro positions. Traders see that effectively. They're feeding off of uh, the short Euro positions. And we don't see that uh, end at any time soon here. I'm scaling down to the lower time frames. Here's your uh, weekly, here's your daily. And you know, if anything, right now it's, it's pointed lower again too. And you continue to see volume spikes on the downside, so we think there's plenty of room down below. What do we see? 110, uh, 110, then par overall, and, and I think that's a that's an apt analysis for the euro. So we still think a lot of a lot of room below. Here's the gold market. Interesting market in the gold. Let me pop it all the way out to the the monthly to get perspective, and and you can see that market found support at a GAN line and a trend line longer term. Uh, however, as you drop down to the lower time frames, you're seeing resistance uh, just above in the form of a, a RTT level there, sell zone there, and you can see the market respected it. Also, you got a big trend line there too, drop down to a, a daily chart, and you'll see it got right up to it, tried to poke its head above there, didn't get very far, and then uh, you came down hard last week. Thursday, you put in the big down day, then you, you retraced uh, yeah, maybe you traced half of that. It looks like the, the entire move on Friday. Uh, so gold, an interesting one here. Uh, what do we say last week? You know, hey, if, if you can, you're in a position, take take that short position. Uh, use the advantage of leverage and you're getting short that market because you had a very well-defined uh, favorable risk reward at those higher levels. So we st still think that's the case if you can get short gold of around 1300 with a stop just above those highs. Oh, I don't know. Uh, with a stop 13.15 or so, we still think that's not a bad way to go. Overall, pop out to weekly, gold is still in a pattern of uh, lower highs, lower highs, lower highs. And it, it, it hasn't, it's done pretty well in the face of a, a growing U.S. economy and a stronger dollar. Gold could certainly be a lot weaker uh, for sure, uh, well, over the last year or so. You see it's, it's definitely weak when you, you go back a couple of years, but uh, you know, hey, I got to give it to gold. It held up pretty good in the face of a runaway dollar rally lately. However, now it's at a level where if it's uh, it's definitely questionable, and uh, we we actually like uh, selling rallies on, on in gold on the short term. There, next market we'll cover will be the Japanese yen, and we've pretty much called off the dogs as far as uh, long dollar yen positions here. Oh, that's a, the short term chart here. Let me go out to. Uh, a weekly and you'll see that the market you know it's hitting well, let me pan all the way out to a monthly it's hitting uh long-term resistance we think it's paused in there and, and that's probably pretty normal so we don't think you'll have a whole lot of more upside here if anything when you jump down in that daily chart you can start to see a pattern of a, a lower high potentially another lower high here if it makes another lower low uh, and that's probably going to spell a little bit longer term correction doesn't mean that there's not there there won't be shorter term trading opportunities in there for sure. Our, our focus, however, is more on short the euro and continuing to buy dips in the dollar index. And we think uh, dollar yen for now seems to have run its course. Hey, let's take a look at the crude oil market and then we'll wrap it up. Crude oil finally had a short covering blip there, about a uh, two and a half three dollar rally, pretty good rally. Not necessarily on high volume either. Finally, you get a bit of a dead cat bounce here. Let's go to monthly chart. We definitely feel you can start dollar cost averaging this market on the long side. 
However, be prepared uh, for the long haul, too. If you start to, to nibble, start to buy it, don't expect it to, to turn right around. We think this will be a long, drawn-out process as this market attempts to recover. And this is a, a big reason why you're going to continue to see uh, dollar strength. You're going to continue to see the U.S. Act U.S. economy strength in the, into the spring. We think you'll have a big uh, spring retail season. Oh, uh, just around the corner, really. That that'll get started in uh, in February, March, and April. So, we think the U.S. economy has a lot of oomph ahead of it, and and that's only going to be uh, magnified by lower crude oil prices. From an investor standpoint, we like the idea of dollar cost average in crude oil down here. Finally, you can see if you anyone who's invested in crude oil over the last five years is under deep water, they're in trouble. So. We think that the short covering rallies will be short-lived as you have uh, pressure, as you have supply above the market. Uh, however, if you're going to take the long view, which we think is always best, uh, that you could start to nibble on this market. Hey, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Jay Norris. Thank you so much for attending. Hey, check out our article on static and dynamic analysis below the video if you like, and we'll see you next time. Thanks now.